Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Hassan with another episode of the Influence Continuum. This is a special opportunity for me to reconnect with two-time Emmy Award-winning producer, director, uh, and Melissa Jo Peltier. You first contacted me a few years ago saying, I love the cult of Trump. I read it twice. I need to interview you. I'm like, it's COVID. She said, don't worry. You said, don't worry, we'll wear masks and blah, blah, blah. And long story short, we rented a room in a hotel <laughs> and you brought a crew up and we did the interview for your stellar documentary called The Game Is Up. And how I fit in is your idea was to interview former Trump cult members and let them tell their stories and also interview other experts. And you've done this amazing documentary that finally has a distributor. Was it Amazon? Amazon Amaz Prime. It's on, yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. Um, yep. That's that's uh, you can rent it there in a commercial free. It's on Google Play. It's yep. on Tubi with commercials, and it's also on our uh, distributors site, Indie Rights on YouTube, and that's with commercials. Great. That's with a well, lot of what commercials. What we're going <laughs> to do after this is we're going to do a quickie blog. We'll put all these Great. links in and um, links, and we did a bunch of webinars. Yes. You know, after after the documentary to kind of be timely. And this was um, before the, it, the 2020 you know, it election. It was a shame yeah. that you couldn't raise the funds and get the distributor before the 2020 election. But frankly, nothing's changed no. other than the cult of Trump continues. And now we're facing a period of the midterms and beyond to the next presidential election. And Trumpism is not going away, even if he's indicted and no. convicted and sent to jail. No. Because of what I said in the cult of Trump, who are the puppet masters, etc. Um, but I, I so want people to listen to this interview with you. I would like you to take over now and talk about how you conceptualized the film, brought it together, and, and we'll have a conversation about The Game is Up. Thank you, Stephen. Well, you know, um, the whole idea of the cult of Trump, that, that was sort of parallel to me thinking about this. But... You know, early on, I'm sure, just like you, I wanted to do something. I wanted to contribute something. And I was contributing, you know, a little bit of money that I had. And I was contributing, you know, writing and, and tweeting and, and you know, going, going to protests and all those things. But I just felt like I wanted to use my skill set to do something, to awaken people to just how awful, <laughs> how awful this, this Trumpism is to our nation and to our, the people in it. And while I was on Twitter, I was watching Joe Walsh, the former Republican Tea Party congressman, a uh, turned Republican right-wing shock jock. <laughs> uh, I was watching him in real time from about, I don't know, like maybe April of 2017 through July of 2018. I was watching him evolve from a Trump supporter to somebody who was seeing things he didn't agree with. And he was yep. calling them out and yep. he was saying, wait a minute, since when does a president insult, you know, the FBI and the, you know, our, our intelligence agencies, you know, wait a minute. He just kept noticing things that the rest of us were noticing. And right. that to me, I thought, you know, naively he would be the canary in the coal mine for the Republican party, which he wasn't. Right. <laughs> I thought, Oh, all the congressmen well, are going to go this way. He's been trying and he's still very active on Twitter and he's trying to message. He's trying to bring people back to reality. Yeah, yeah. And and that's the thing. You know, he was seeing reality in real time. I was following it. And then mm -hmm. the same thing happened with David Weissman, who was a, a army vet who was literally a Trump troll. He was literally a, you know, mean, nasty, get in your, you know, your your face insult. Trump troll. Yep. Yep. And he changed. He changed. It took him a little bit longer, but he was educated by somebody outside his circles 
he really was helped. To, somebody showed him the right way to do your own. Yeah, your own I, I research. actually wrote about him, Melissa Joe, um, and I because he was trolling Sarah Silverman, the comedian, exactly. And she did a version, not knowing my approach, but she did a version of what I call yes. the strategic interactive approach. And instead of blocking him, muting him, or shutting mm -hmm. him down, or cursing him. She said, oh, you're a veteran. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what? <laughs> a famous celebrities, you know, messaging to me. And and I think the context was ma uh, school violence where, uh -huh. you know, people were going into uh, kill little kids in right. schools. And she said, well, you, you're a veteran. You're against what we're talking about to prevent gun violence. What are your ideas, please? Mm -hmm. Which is respectful curiosity asking a question exactly and he he was like i don't know what we can do to stop school shootings what are your ideas sarah and it started a chain reaction exactly. where he started reality testing and i wrote about him in the book because he is right. a, an example like joe walsh that exactly. people can wake up and change yes. and understand psychology of influence and, right. and all the, the techniques. Please continue. Well, I was such a fan of yours because I've been studying cults for at least, gosh, probably 20 years. <laughs> um, ah. I started doing the research for um, a project that never actually happened, but but I got went down the rabbit hole with it and, and I learned about, you know, Scientology and I have like a whole shelf on my library that's cult books and many of them are yours <laughs> and <laughs> so I was recognizing the cult stuff early thanks to mm -hmm. my education by you and and others like you who have been studying this phenomenon and um mm -hmm. And actually, my mother made me read a book about cults before I went to college in California. <laughs> my New oh, England good Yankee for mother. Her. Yeah, she was just worried. I think she knew I was kind of a seeker and a, a you know, curious person. And I think she was afraid that I would be curious and be, you know, lured in. And so she mm -hmm. made me read a, a book that summer before I went out. And, and I was approached. I was approached by Scientology and I was approached by, I was approached by somebody else too. And I, the Scientology guy got me as far as the building because <laughs> mm -hmm. I, he, I, he was pretending to be a graduate student at the university I was, I was at in Pomona college. He was from Claremont university and, uh -huh. um, he was, uh, uh, very convincing. You know, I was walking my bike. It was like, you know, we're, everyone wants to help out a fellow graduate student. Who's really cute. Who needs a survey done. Right. Oh, that's how I got me cute uh, yeah. girls after my yeah. girlfriend dumped me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and so, my goodness. but thanks to my mom and my, and my, you know, my, my radar was up. Yep. And so I got the hell out of there. <laughs> and Preventive education is a yep. version of inoculation for the mind yes. virus of it course is. of mind control, right? It absolutely is. And anyway, so I saw that too. And my thought was there's a lot of people in Trump circles who are not liking what he's saying and doing, but they're afraid to say it. They, they're afraid they're wrong because no one else is saying it, you know, and they don't have any any feedback to their worries. You know, if they mm -hmm. even voice them in their group, they get shot down. So my thought was, let's show them, let's, let's try to get a, a variety of people who everyone can relate to. They all had different reasons for voting for Trump and different reasons for not, for changing their mind about him, different you yeah. know impetus to break the spell, but they can be identified with, you know, let's give them people to identify with who can break it down on how Trump really is betraying America and how they saw it and what changed for them and how they came out. And I, I wanted to do that as like, you want to do your book as a, a an act of conscience. Um, I yep, totally. we raised a little bit of money through a pack, but we didn't raise enough to finish it. And it ended up pretty much coming out of my pocket, which it was mm. pretty disastrous in a way. It's a shame. Yeah. Oh God. Well, I'm, you know, I'm very broke right now, but, uh. um, but I just had to do it. I knew that if Trump got reelected and I hadn't made this film, then I would never forgive myself. And because mm. we couldn't get it finished before uh 2020 election, we did have the Bacha Goldberg seg uh, segment out 
and we did oh, all please these tell people webinars. about Bacha and and oh, the Bacha other people, other yeah. ex members. Well, Bacha, folks, this is a great documentary. Trust me, w- <laughs> watch it seriously. Rent it or buy it. Have a have a party and get friends together and watch it because it really will help you see there is hope that yes. people even though they've spent years and gave lots of money, can go, right. wait a minute, this does not make sense, or these right. are violating my values. Please continue. Bacha Goldberg is where I interrupted you. Exactly, go. sure. Well, she, Bacha Goldberg was a rising star in the kind of Charlie Kirk, Candace Owen, uh, Ben Shapiro kind of circles. She mm-hmm. was a uh, New York, Brooklyn, New York Republican, which is not that common. Uh, and she, she, in fact, she restarted the Brooklyn Republican, Young Republican Party, which, mm. um, a club rather, which uh, a childhood friend of my husband who grew up in Brooklyn uh, had actually started in the 70s. <laughs> so she mm-hmm. restarted it. And that's actually how we found her because we found her through him. He was a Republican mm. consultant. He's no yep. longer one. Uh, he left, he knew too much about Trump and he left and he has yep. been a star. His name is um, Jerry O'Brien. But uh, Bacha was all in for Trump. She was not voting yet, but she was helping him get elected. She was going to all these events. She went to his rallies. She got her dad to drive her eight hours and stand, then stand in line for eight hours for his rallies. And she describes his rallies as like a drug. He, she said it was a very unhealthy drug, but that's how you felt when you were there. You were just... Mm. You were just amped up. You were so, so in his thrall while you were there. Even if you didn't go in agreeing with stuff, you came out agreeing with it. And that's pretty cult leader standard stuff. But she didn't know that. Of course, she she just thought this means he's a great man. Um, and she was all for Trump, very happy with what Trump was doing until Charlottesville. And uh-huh. she's Jewish and she has family who were killed in the Holocaust. And yeah. it it also happened that her parents were refuseniks from Russia. They were refugees from Russia, uh-huh. Uh-huh. from communist Russia. And she, they had told her her whole life, even though she became conservative, and her dad was conservative. Her mother was yep. not, but her dad was. Um, she, she knew what to watch for. You know, just like mm-hmm. I was saying that I knew with my education <laughs> from yep. my mom preparing me for college. And uh, she knew. And so she had a bad feeling about that. And but she was willing to forgive Trump for it. It was a mistake. She was interviewed by a reporter. The reporter said, well, you know, how do you and your your Brooklyn Club feel about about what Trump said? And she said, well, we're all very disappointed in him. You know, we're very disappointed in what he said. That's all Mm -hmm. she said. You know, fair, right? In a free society, you should be able to say I'm disappointed in something somebody you you support does, right? Mm-hmm. Well, she got a call immediately from the Republican Party in New York saying, you cannot say that. Republicans have to love Trump. We have to say really good stuff about Trump or nothing at all. And she was appalled because this yeah. reminded her very much of what her mother had told her about living in a totalitarian society where you are supposed to say only the party line And in fact, you're only supposed to think the party line. And that really, really woke her up. And I think that was the beginning of the end for her. Uh, And she, but she had made the Republican Party her whole life. I mean, she, that was her work. She was working. She was running campaigns. She went to the inauguration. She hung out with, you know, she has a photo with um, Kellyanne Conway at the, at the, the, um, the balls. Uh, She was, you know, the most excited about Trump and she learned the hard way that he was not going to be a president for everybody and that his vision of America was not the vision the founders had and or her right. parents had when they came here for freedom. Right. And if I may, if I may interrupt for a second, sure. Melissa Joe, and just say that after the Soviet Union collapsed, I was brought to Moscow at the invitation of a psychologist who was familiar with my work. Uh, to do a workshop for psychiatrists, psychologists there, because all the cults from America were rushing into Russia. Right. And they was like, what's up with this? So I was teaching about brainwashing and mind control. And the reaction was, 
Uh, Dr. Hassan, do you understand you're describing the whole system of pedagogy of the Soviet Union? Of course. <laughs> if you were this, do you understand that we would put dissidents in psychiatric facilities because they are criticizing the regime? And I'm like, yes. Oh, you are counseling us. <laughs> and I'm like, if the shoe fits. It was, yeah. a, it was an amazing experience I had How in Russia. Sure, but I, I just wanted to, to, to put a little exclamation on Abacha's pa- family saying we, got, we, we ran away from this right. authoritarianism. Yeah. And, and one of the things she says in our film, uh, which I wish, I wish I could have, she expounded more on it. But she said, you know, there's people right now who believe there should only be one party, the Trump party. And, and they believe that a dictatorship would be better. You know, I just have somebody who will take care and wipe out all the people I hate. But she said, you know, you you think you want it, but believe me, you don't. And nobody in America has really understood what a totalitarian country is, what a fascist country is. And, you know, with the greatest generation dying out, which included my dad who fought in World War Two, that my dad, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they are um, they're. This country has forgotten what we are supposed to stand for. And it's not Christian nationalism and it's not, uh, you know, the um, uh, what's the the term again? The um, dominionists, the Christian right, the the seven mountains, the new apostolic reformation. But if I may also add, um, when people are raised in an authoritarian cult, whether mm-hmm. it's a political cult like a country or raised in a Bible cult or some other authoritarian type group, right. unless they understand social psychology and what's normal and what growing up in freedom where parents want children to individuate and learn to think for themselves. Unless that happens, there's a strong tendency for them to seek out another authoritarian cult. Like Ginny? Because (laughs) it makes them feel safe because Mm -hmm. that's what they grew up with. And so when she's talking about there are many people who want a dictatorship, I, my theory is a lot of these same folks were raised that way. Yeah. And uncertainty creates a lot of stress, Mm -hmm. anxiety, et cetera. And the comforting voice, I got it. I know it all. I'm smarter than the generals. I know more than the economists. Trust me. It soothes the fear, even though the frontal cortex goes, wait a minute, he's a pathological liar about (laughs) everything, 35,000 documented lies while he was in the White House. How can I trust him? And actually, that was the thing that woke me up from the moon cult was in the course of my deprogramming, I, I was shown one of his speeches where he was coddling up to congressmen and senators and saying how much he loves America and Amer- respects Americans. And I heard him personally diss America and American and, and say democracy was satanic personally. And that was the thing that, wait a minute, he's a liar. Right. And as soon as I let that conscious thought happen, it felt like a house of cards in my mind mm-hmm. going plop, 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 plop. Because how could he be a man of God if he's a liar? Right. How can I trust him if he's a liar? <laughs> and well, the, the- I'm going to say for our listeners, would you ever consider entering a business relationship with a known liar? Someone who's screwed everyone that he's ever done business with? Would you really? Would you marry someone who's a pathological liar, who it's all about them and they don't care a damn about you? No. So why would you want anybody to represent us that has those, you know, nefarious qualities? Herschel Walker. <laughs> I mean, it's, but you know what? I, the, I was, I've been reading up on, you know, the, the current Christian national cult and and the cult that seems to be forming in Congress. And they, both the evangelical version and the Catholic version seem to have an out clause for the truth, which is that we need to make this a theocracy. We need to make our rules based on the Bible, you know, 
Yeah. What I don't know what testament they're talking about, but um, no, <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's certainly the direct the New revelation. It's not the New <sighs> Testament. The leaders of these cults say they're apostles or prophets, and they get direct revelations, right? And and they're running, you know, behavior control, information control, thought control, emotional, my bite model of authoritarian control, exactly cults, yes. and they program their people to fear the Democrats or anyone who doesn't, you know, sign up with them as the enemy. They're not just different, but they are actually the enemy. Exactly. And the ends justify the means in mind control cults. So lying is fine. Killing is fine. As long as you advance the cause. Yeah. And that's so dangerous. I mean, it's, it's, it's totally and justifies the means no matter what. So that, that allows you to do, you know, atrocities really because yep. it's for a greater good you know um I, I can kill my neighbor because god wants something my neighbor isn't doing <laughs> you know I, I mean that is that's where it leads and that's what yep. that's what scares me and that's why i feel like when you see in our film when you see these people change and you see them tell their stories and you know i come from a liberal background but i wanted to talk to republicans I mean, I really mm-hmm. did. I wanted to understand why they voted for Trump also. And I think yep. that's something really important for liberals to do to fight the polarization and the tribalization is to watch this film because people weren't all, especially, you know, 2020 maybe, but 2020, 2016, people who voted for Trump were not all racist. They weren't all right. uh, crazy evangelical, you know, the, the end is coming next week people. They were yep. normal people, a lot of a lot of normal Republicans who yep. assumed this would be a normal Republican presidency, uh, even though the warning signals were blaring all over, you know, they everybody like for instance Chris Gibbs, the farmer in our in our documentary, Chris uh, is a is a farmer. His whole life is about this you know, his family business, his farm. Yeah. And it's a rough life. It's a a really hard life. It's hard to stay, uh, you know, in in profit when you're a farmer. And he was very concerned about agricultural, you know, and, and, and environmental regulations. So that was his like laser focus. And Trump said, oh, I'm going to repeal this one law that Obama had put in, which allowed, um, inspectors from the EPA to come literally on your Mm -hmm. land to look at your, your water. And Mm -hmm. it was a a misstep by Obama because he didn't read the room there for, for farmers, (laughs) you know, I mean, I think there there would have been other ways that that could have been done without, you know, a sweeping new law that says, wait a minute, they're coming on my land. They're going to, you know, do my fish pond, which they could, you know? And so he said, well, I'm going to repeal that. So farmers love that because that had taken on sort of a, a symbolic meaning for farmers you know, against Obama, against the Democrats. Like, look at this, they're coming into our lives. Yeah. And, and so he heard Trump say that and he thought, huh, maybe, maybe this guy's going to be great. And mm-hmm. uh, he, he very shortly learned that he was actually disastrous for agriculture and farmers. Disastrous. Right. He was very influential to me when I first watched him talking and interacted with him. He's just a literally salt of the earth, down to earth, really practical, common sense, good American. Mm -hmm. It's like, I wish I hadn't voted for him. I made a bad mistake. Right. Right. And, and that's another thing too, like you pointed out in in the documentary, because you, you come up, (laughs) you know, at at opportune moments throughout with your, the points that, that, Mm. um, Part of the problem is people don't want to change their minds and they don't want to admit they were wrong. And the truth is, and I, I want to say this to liberals too, you know, when somebody says, oh my gosh, this was wrong. I'm on the other side now. Don't, don't be nasty and rub their face in what they used to do. You know, welcome them in because thousand percent. we need a coalition and people who've seen the light should not be punished for having once not seen the light. They shouldn't. Yeah, be. understanding and, social psychology and that we're mm-hmm. all humans and we all have believed lies at some point, whether it was someone knocking on our door oh, yeah. and selling us a vacuum cleaner we don't need, or being in a relationship <laughs> with somebody who, mm-hmm. you know, turned out to be a liar who is, you know, 
a mentally unstable. We all had these moments, but the key is pick yourself up and go, you know what? We make mistakes. I didn't know what I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Now I know more. Um, apologize if you need to. Otherwise, just move on because mm -hmm. life's precious and life's short. Yes. And for me, um, I was so ashamed and embarrassed. And back in 76, <clears throat> when I was deprogrammed, people were just learning about Moon because he was supporting Nixon during Watergate. In fact, right. I fasted for Nixon, even though I didn't like <laughs> Nixon before. Um, and, um, you know, the thing is, is that I had some friends who would like stick my nose in it. How come you didn't listen to me? I told you it was a cult. And I, I Lenny, you know, it's like, I feel bad enough. <laughs> yeah, please, you know, yeah. and my, but my next door neighbor, Monica, literally a friend from birth, um, uh, baked me chocolate chip cookies <laughs> and said, well, come home. I still get teary eyed when I think of the, the touch, uh, you know, welcome yeah. home. Yeah, so nice that's to have what we you need back. To do. And, you know, Joe Walsh said to me when I called him, cause he was the first person I called cause he was the first story yeah. I knew I wanted to do. You yep. know, to ask him if he would do something like this. And he said, you know, thank you, Melissa, because you and Molly Jong Fast were the only liberals who were nice to me. <laughs> and mm. it's like, you know, I'm sorry. I believe in being nice to everybody. Yes, uh, and, me too. And, and asking them questions. Because exactly. I want to know if, what, what are they basing this on? Is it something I should look into? Or is it something that I'm, is it, you know, my aunt's cousin's personal trainer on Facebook. <laughs> yep. And, and, and that is a really important thing to, to find out just for yourself. Yeah. Uh, I want so to plug was... Adam Grant for one moment, if sure. you don't mind, oh, yes. Melissa. Mm -hmm. So Adam Grant's a very famous social psychologist. He has podcasts and he's written incredibly wonderful books. One of them was called Think Again. And I love this book because it says nothing about cults in it, but it's like just separate your ego from your beliefs and pursue truth and and be prepared to change your mind. And it's not an assault on your identity, your ego. It's you, 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 you believe what you believe based on the information you had exactly. and be happy if you change your mind, because you're alive and you're growing. So it's a wonderful book. I highly recommend everybody read it. It's not a political book. In fact, I reached That's out great. to him, said, can I interview you? And he's like, nah, I'm just going to stay in the social psychology lane. But it's such mm. an important thing to have this respectful curiosity, being able to listen to, to step into other people's shoes, invite them to step into your shoes. And what I learned from him and in terms of all of my 46 years was the best thing to do is approach like a Trump true believer and say, listen, you're an intelligent, educated person. I respect you. I don't believe what you believe, but I'm prepared to change my beliefs. We, can you agree to a, 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 an agreement with me where we take turns, you share something that was very influential in persuading you to believe in Trump or mm -hmm. Trumpism, and we'll watch it together or listen to it together and discuss it. And then right. I'll have a turn to share something to get your opinion on, and we'll watch it together and go back and forth. Right. Right. And that works to help people get out, especially if you understand cult dynamics. It's always more effective to talk about other cults than the one that the person's in. Mm -hmm. And with MAGA folks, talking about Chinese communist brainwashing, they love to talk about that. Of course. And they, they like to talk <laughs> And they love to talk about pimps and, and sex traffickers and how they recruit and indoctrinate people to be slaves. So there are frames to discuss social psychology and mind control. But you ask questions in a way where you want the person to connect the dots to yes. what, 
Exactly. Right? Well, I always say that, um, that, by the way, I don't see you on the screen anymore. It's a keep going. Okay. Um, I always tell people, you know, to, to ask questions, to get, put your emotions aside, to mm -hmm. ask questions and to listen, but keep asking questions till they get to the bottom of their talking points, because their talking points are essentially thought stopping techniques like an occult. Yep. And when they get to the bottom of them, a lot of times they just freeze. And for me, I'm saying, you know, it's very hard to change minds like this, but what if during that freeze, they had a moment of doubt, you know, just one moment of doubt. And you don't need to yell at them or call them names or anything. Just let them have those moments of doubt. Let them sit with it for a second, you know, and make sure if you're going to give them information that it's, it's pretty much primary source information, you know, so they yep. can't say the, the deep state did it, but they, they may anyway, but, but, yep. um, that's sort of the best thing. And that's actually how Sarah O'Connell, i uh, sorry, Sarah O'Connor, um, O'Connell, Yes, O'Connor. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Sarah. Uh, she was a British um, follower of Sarah Silverman, who kind of took it on herself to educate, well, to help David Wiseman educate himself. Mm. And what she did was she sent him very good primary source articles from a wide variety of sources, and she let him do his own research. And, yep. you know, she, she would say, look, you know, I, I'm not telling you not to like Trump, but I'm telling you that this thing that you think isn't actually factual, let me show you. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, she showed the evidence of his draft dodging, which really him as a veteran, that really got him. Yeah. You, know, that, you find the common ground elements where you can agree with a person, mm -hmm. you know, has right. the government lied to us in the past? Yeah, they did MK Ultra. They were doing mind control on citizens and LSD and a million other things. So you find points of agreement. Right. And, you know, I, I, I basically say the whole system is corrupted. We need to shift oh, the yeah. whole system. The Democrats are not the answer, except that we need to continue with the Democrats till we can change laws and put back the, the, the checks and balances and get the dark money out of politics right. with that whole Supreme Court thing Ooh, about boy. allowing I mean, corporations exactly. is a disaster. But we, the point is, I'm not like light, saying be a Democrat for life. I'm saying the midterms and the presidential election, if you're going to elect an election denier who doesn't believe in the law, doesn't believe in facts, even mm -hmm. though Bill, William Barr, Trump's own AG, said that the, <laughs> the election wasn't right. stolen, his own attorneys said the election wasn't stolen and he and and but this is a coup attempt with January 6th and everything else right yeah yep yep but um uh so i am urging people to educate yourself and vote and understand oh, yes. that w voting is precious we shouldn't take it for granted if we have an opportunity to do early voting do it because you don't want to wait till the last second, frankly, because no. things can happen at the polling site to disrupt, you know, the the. Uh, the oh, the, yeah, that's the, the, uh, they're planning on that. They're planning well, on that's that. That's what I'm worried about. Me and too. that's why people uh, who are watching this are telling everyone volunteer to watch polls, because if it's only the Trumpists that are coming to the polls, that's out of balance. And that's and some of them gonna... are going to come armed. They are. So uh, all I can say is um, it's a precarious time in human history Isn't and it? violence is not going to solve anything. It's going to make things worse. And oh, the yeah. enemies of America, the enemies of democracy, the enemies of human rights who have authoritarian countries or cults want the government to fall apart. They oh, yeah. don't want regulations, you know, and, and, and they basically want people to do whatever they tell them to do. Also, you know, Putin uh, and Russia and the communist countries, including China, um, and P Putin's, uh, Russia's not communist, but it was. And the way he runs the nation is sort of like, 
you know, sort of, sort of Soviet light. But um, I think that like uh, a KGB agent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which he is. Yeah. yeah was. But I, yeah. I, was. Yeah. Um, I guess you never. I think wasn't it him who said you never. You're never an ex KGB. Agent? I've heard that actually. Yeah. It's called FSB now, but right. it's it's really run like a, a mafia, a oligarchy, oh, yeah. you know, uh, situation. Yeah, it's a police and state that he, backs up criminals, basically. Yes, it's it. Yeah. That's sad. But I want to come back to the film because I okay. really want people to rent it or buy it. I want them to invite other people to rent it and buy it and share on social media because the the people who want Trumpism want to stop people from seeing your film oh, or yeah. hearing about me. the cult of Trump. We've had a, a – I mean, I can, can't even begin to start telling you. I mean, I, I don't – I'm not – sure that my account on Twitter being hacked, it wasn't related to that too. Um, yep. because I was tweeting a lot about the film because we don't have any money for publicity. So, you know, we're, we're doing right. everything we can, uh, you know, grassroots to, to, to get the word out about it. Exactly. And I, 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 she said, help, you know, write a review, Steve. I did it. <laughs> and it was like, Steve, would you interview me? Tomorrow, yes. Melissa, <laughs> you know, let's do this, please. Because really the film should have been viewed by every American, in my opinion, and a discussion needs to happen right. about the fact that human minds can be tricked and hacked. Oh, yeah. People are getting recruited and indoctrinated online uh, because uh, personal data is being collected into the dark web and AI is able to target ads that they know are going to press the buttons to mm -hmm. make them vote the way they, they want you to vote. Right. And we just, we need to be educated consumers and people don't realize how, how much the internet has been co-opted by greed and by people who don't want regulation or pri data privacy regulation. And really, they want to destroy America's because we're the only country that will stand up to Putin, has right. the means to stand has up means, to Putin. Yes, and, yes. and China, for that matter, and Iran, yeah, I mean, and North Korea. And, you know, the whole, all, the, the whole story about, you know, Biden's a tool of China, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, Biden is finally doing something about China. Trump went ahead and got his daughter a bunch of trademarks in China. Right. <laughs> so it's, it, you know, it, it, the, there's a huge level of lies that um, have become mainstream. And yep. it's so frustrating, I know, for, you know, to, for people to have to listen to them and to say, no, 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 that's not yeah, true. Yeah, and I just want to say that <clears throat> I've been censored by the mainstream media. So mm -hmm. when Trumpers say the mainstream media, I'm like, I agree oh. with you. Do you know I used to be on every TV show before I wrote The Cult of Trump and then people are oh, afraid yeah. to do no. that. Bandy Lee edited a book, great book called The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump. And after the book became a bestseller, she got censored yep. too. So we need to do a grassroots educational campaign. And mental health professionals really have something to say. There's yeah. record levels of depression and anxiety. Anxiety. But the media is more <laughs> interested in, in making money from advertisers and a big pharma wants you to take pills instead yeah. of like... I think it's even deeper than that. I think, I think you know, I've been saying this since the 90s because uh -huh. I, I, I was in... I had just started my career around the time when the Fairness Doctrine was was repealed just a Explain little bit Explain what that. that is. Oh, well, the Fairness Doctrine was... Listeners. It was a... a, a an, uh, FCC law that said that, you know, if you have somebody with a, a partisan opinion on your show, you have to have equal time to somebody with the other opinion. Mm -hmm. Right. So yep. um, Fox News wouldn't exist <laughs> if that were the case now. But Fox News is cable. And so, you know, cable is not even bound by those rules. But um, what what's interesting ab about it was 
when people kept saying, you know, I kept hearing Rush Limbaugh with the liberal media, liberal media. The, as he was saying this, the media was getting less and less liberal because it was yep. it was getting, uh, you know, vertical integration. It was basically uh, in, in the mid 2000s. Uh, it was or 2000 before 2010. I think it was six multinational mm-hmm. corporations owned 90 yeah, percent of right. USA media, six <laughs> Corporations, multinational corporations. Who runs yep. that? It's not Rachel, Rachel Maddow, not Anderson Cooper. The right. person who runs that is a member of the board, the chairman of the board, and they are sitting down and they're looking at shareholder profits and they're corporate. The corporate yeah. agenda wants less regulations, tax breaks, uh, you know, control of free speech so people can't trash their product. And I mean, right. they are and really Don't forget board. the fossil fuel industry, oh, the God. oil and the and, and et cetera. Yeah. Don't were, want green anything. Right. They want to continue to destroy the planet until, you know, which I don't even understand how people can live with themselves. They have grandkids, you know, they have kids, grandkids. How can you live with yourself knowing that your child is going to be living on a dying planet that may die very quickly? And yep. I, I don't understand how they can do that. I, maybe I think that they're, they're either so narcissistic or so in that bubble of thinking, or maybe they just believe that by their wealth, their children will escape all of this somehow. Yeah, so there are ideologies that are toxic. I've written about Ayn Rand and her oh. doctrine of selfishness oh, yes. is good and altruism is bad. Oh, yeah. So there's yeah. that's one piece of it. There's mm-hmm. social Darwinism. Well, I've made a billion dollars, so I'm a superior person to yes. everyone else who hasn't made a billion yes. dollars. And, that and is so what a, if half the planet dies... Um, my family, you know, we'll we'll figure out how to do well with whoever's left, <laughs> and uh, and some of these folks are truly into Armageddon, like they oh, yeah. really think Jesus is coming back and God's going to remake the entire planet, so it doesn't matter how much pollution, because God's going to snap a finger and everything's going to be fine, or they're going to go to heaven you know, paradise or whatever. So they're not, they're in cultic mindsets, in my yeah. opinion, like the billionaires need an intervention. In oh my, my gosh. Opinion, I think, to, honestly, I think it's a disease. I think it's like a, an addiction, wealth hoarding, you know, because these people have in multiple lifetimes. They could live at yeah. the most, I mean, you can't, once you have that much money, it, you can't spend it all. You really can't. And uh, absolutely. Your and kids you can't spend it all. spoil your kids if you give it all to them. Like but even the, if you do, they can't spend it all. And then their kids can't spend it all. So yeah. how, many, how many generations of unlimited wealth do you want? And, you yeah. know, we all know what happens to children, usually children of wealthy people. They usually disappoint. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. Usually, not always. But yep. I think so. What I I do want to interrupt, if I may, because sure. I'm looking at the time. You interviewed some evangelicals yes. that I was also very impressed with. Can you talk a little bit about them? Well, that was you movie? know I had a wish list. I had a wish list for types of people for my yep. film, and and the one thing I didn't get was a border family who were being displaced by eminent domain because of the wall. Because there actually were a lot who had voted uh-huh. for Trump, who suddenly found that you know they're family farm that they've had for 200 years is now government property. And, but none of them would talk to us because they were in the middle of lawsuits. Uh You know, they were trying to sue the government to try to get a little more money for their, you know, their property or to stop them. And so I could, we couldn't get that. It was so frustrating because I really thought that was important. There were people who were shocked. They voted for Trump. They love the idea of the wall, but then what you want my farm for the wall. (laughs) So, Uh, and, you know, eminent domain is traditionally in the Republican Party, something people fight against. Yep. But indeed. suddenly, suddenly it was fine if it was Trump. So yep. that's that's important. But um, but with the Back evangelicals, to the evangelicals who, that's who, who I really who, wanted to get. Yeah, and, and we were able to find uh, three evangelicals plus uh, a pastor and, um, and an Episcopalian uh, a priest minister. Um, mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. She was Protestant. Sorry, not not well. 
Episcopalian is Protestant. Uh-huh. I don't know, I don't know the denomination of her church, but um, Dr. Jackie People Jackson are going to watch your documentary and they'll get the background. Yeah. But, you know, um, they, well, the bottom line is people are told from the pulpit who to vote for. They're told. Yeah. And as one of our evangelical um, uh, pastors has said to us, you know, naturally, very religious people, evangelicals, tend to have a little authoritarian leaning anyway, because they look up to their pastors and ministers and priests as the word. You know, they're the intermediary mm-hmm. between God and them. Mm-hmm. So whatever they say has to be true. Mm-hmm. And what happened, and even we have an evangelical who is a recent graduate of Liberty University in the film, and mm-hmm. he basically, you know, says it like it is. Liberty University, you know, they basically have now, they, they've joined republicanism and evangelicalism as the same, which they're not. Mm. Right. And uh, they have really pressured students there and in other churches like the, the Hawthorne couple that we interviewed who were mm-hmm. evangelicals. They pressured them from their, their pulpit um, and that's mm-hmm. how they ended up voting for Trump. And I think it's so important that evangelicals see other evangelicals who came to the truth and how That's they came to that truth. That's so important. People who know the Bible, people who love Jesus need to be speaking much more directly about faith in yes. the Bible and Jesus of the Bible, not, oh, not yeah. some living apostle who says that they supplant you know, because it's new revelations. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus the, um, I, <laughs> I think it was um, Riggleman who said, I've been reading um, Denver Riggleman's book, which you, you should read. It's really Yeah, excellent. I read it. Oh, yeah, did I read you? It. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, The Breach, it's called. The Breach, it's incredible. But, um, you know, it, it, suddenly Jesus is a bully. <laughs> suddenly he's this macho yeah. bully, you know, who's strapping an AK-47 and uh And, and it's white. Nice, and his wife, well, he's been white for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he's been white since I was raised in the church anyway, but, mm. um, but <laughs> which is obviously not true. But right. it's, um, you know, they're, they're not following the Jesus of the Gospels. They're right, not. exactly. And that guy has, has vanished and, and some other guy has, has supplanted him. Right. So we're going to wrap up in a few more minutes, but there were other experts that you summoned to be part of your documentary. I'm not the only one. Why don't you share with our listeners some of the other experts and why you chose them, please? Well, um, Dr. John Schindler talked about uh, uh, the national security um, response to Trump siding with Putin over them. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is a, a, he's very right wing <laughs> and I wanted him, you know, j- just as a right wing person, he would say that, you know, that yep. everybody was saying what is going on with Trump and Putin then, because there's just, right. you know, there were t- questions to begin with, but never in, in history has a, a U.S. president sided with a, a, a hostile state against his own Security forces. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just absolutely. That was crazy. in Helsinki, if I remember yes, correctly, July twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and he met with Putin, and they couldn't keep keep notes or something. Oh yeah, of the no, meeting. they they, uh, they wouldn't allow notes. Um, <laughs> Duh. I know, and and but you know, our media treated it normally, and uh, yeah. again, you know, the media, the people who decide a lot of what you see in media that's controlled that makes it not a liberal media is what you don't see. Yeah. Not just what you do see. I mean, MSNBC yeah, framing. Can t- framing a thousand percent. It's critically framing. important. Yeah. And who, like, some other experts that you, Oh, you uh, interviewed. Jen, uh, Dr. Jen Merciasa, who is a yeah. brilliant, um, she wrote a book also, and it was called the, uh, uh, demagogue for president, the record rhetorical genius of Donald Trump. And she talks about the, all the strategies of communication that he uses, which are very deliberate and very associated with people like Hitler, with with dictators, yep. and uh, mind control techniques that work on crowds. And mm-hmm. he's been doing that. And she's saying, you know, don't write him off as a, as a dumb guy. He may not be curious. He may not be intellectually, you know, 
interested in, in things, but he understands how to communicate and manipulate. Yep. And you don't. As I said in <laughs> you my hearing book. him don't. Right, exactly. <laughs> He understands yep. it. So she's really wonderful. And she does, she goes yeah. into some of that. Um, Dr. Jackie Lewis, who is a, 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 a scholar, uh, um, a biblical scholar, a minister at um, uh, Middle Church in New York City. She mm -hmm. talks a lot about what she sees as uh, how, how Jesus has been corrupted, really. Yeah. Um, and who else do we have? Remind me. Um, I, let's see, uh, did you mention John Schindler or Dina yeah. Grayson? Oh, Dina, uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. She's a friend, Dr. Dina Grayson. Dina was very involved in the original Obama, um, Ebola response and is an expert on pandemics. <laughs> and mm -hmm. she, in fact, she was the one who, who I think she was, it might have been in December of 2019 that she mm. was telling some of us, look, you guys, this is going to be bad. This is going to mm. be bad. And mm -hmm. she was right, of course. And she talks a lot about how the um, Trump administration botched the response and how devastating mm -hmm. it was to this, the United States and our economy. Um, mm. And... Uh, Anyway, that's we have a, and a, you a to, lot of experts. Uh, was it, did you already mention the fellow Brian from Far Farmers for oh, Free right. Trade? Oh, right. Yes, 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 yes. Um, oh, blanking on his last name. Brian Cole? or It's with Brian, a K. K-U-E-H-L. Yes. I'm not cool. sure how Brian it's cool. pronounced. Yeah, um, cool. He is uh, the director of Farmers for Free Trade and also, I think, Manufacturing for Free Trade. And uh -huh. he is a really incredibly intelligent, well-read guy who understands the farm community and understands their needs and understands how economics actually, unlike Trump, how economics actually work <laughs> in yep. trade. And yep. uh, he addresses a lot of the issues with Trump's trade policies, which... You know, I, I hear people on talk radio say, well, Trump did so much for the country. Well, no, <laughs> he really didn't. He, he wiped out a lot of farmers, a lot of bankruptcies, yeah. a lot of suicides. Yeah. And and it was hushed up because he gave them money. He basically gave them, you know, made them part of the welfare state. Yeah. Which, and let's not forget the covid hoax and, and the bleach <sighs> and, uh, uh, you know, the ivermectin yeah. as a, instead of the vaccine killed so many Mm -hmm. So many of mm -hmm. his base, really, who trusted yeah. him, and now they are in their the the ICU going. I was wrong. COVID is real. I think there's something like five right wing talk radio hosts who all died of COVID who were denying it. I think yeah. it's five. It may be less. Maybe four. But yeah. there were a number of them, you know, who right. were anti mask, anti vax, and now they're dead. Yeah. So the game is up is the title. And what's the subtitle? Remind Disillusion me. Disillusion Trump voters tell their stories. And that's really what it is. They're telling their stories. Great. And for our listeners, remind us it's on Amazon and Google yes. Play. Um, it's on Amazon, be, Google yeah. Play, and that's without commercials. Uh, yeah. If you if you see it on Amazon, please leave us a nice review. It really does help people find us. Uh, and it's also for free with commercials on Tubi and mm -hmm. on our uh, distributor Indie Rights YouTube site. Okay. And do you still have the website for the documentary? Is yes. It it's um, it's uh, uh, thegameisupmovie.com. Great. The, the game is up And right. I do want to say, because I went on Amazon. There's a button where it says, like, have a party, share this and have yes. a party. Yes. I was like, what a great idea. Let's have a, a watch party. party. Absolutely. And, you know, if you have that neighbor who they took down all their signs, they don't wear the T-shirts and hats anymore, but if they, they'll still defend him. They'll still say stuff to, you know, they'll still make excuses for him. Those are yeah. the people who maybe need to see this. You know? So here's my recommendation for those for for people like that, and that is if you have a relationship, a warm relationship with anybody, 
Um, say, you know, there's this film. I'd really love to watch it with you and get your opinion about it. Yeah. And be prepared to hit the pause button as they're <laughs> reacting. But make it about them. You know, in mm -hmm. other words, don't don't have a frame where you're trying to persuade them or tell them they're wrong. But just I'm really curious what you think of this. Per what do you think of Joe Walsh? And what right. do you think of this person? And what do you make of Hassan, that Jew who grew up <laughs> 1.3 miles from Donald Trump in Flushing, Queens? Unbelievable. You know, the former Mooney. <laughs> yeah, former Mooney. What do you think? You know, do you think tr China China is doing brainwashing? Well, Steve, it helped Steve get out of the Moonies to learn about Chinese communist brainwashing. Oh, he wrote that book called The Cult of Trump. Have you read it? <laughs> oh, I don't want to pay for it. Well, they, they're in the library, and there's even audios in the library for free. Check it out. It's cost, if, if cost less than, than your Trump yeah. sweatshirt. <laughs> yeah, that you leave out. You, you want to <laughs> leave out the dings and just be, like, warm. Yeah. Like, I'm really, exactly. I care about you. You're intelligent. You're educated. I really want to hear your point of view. And if you give me your attention to watch this, I'd be willing to give you my attention to watch anything you want me to watch with you and we'll talk about it because that is how we're going to end the polarization right that has been done to us on purpose by psychological yeah. warfare techniques and mm -hmm. social media build warm relations with your neighbors and with other people if you've blocked family members and friends and cur curse them out or whatever apologize Say, I miss you. Can we please reform our relationship? Let's talk about sports. Let's talk about the weather. Let's talk about the kids. Let's yeah. talk about a family reunion and just build the relationships back. Because ultimately, right. love is stronger than mind control. Yes. And people really don't like to be lied to and exploited. Nobody does. And at the point that someone can get a new perspective and see options. And right. one of the brilliant pieces of this movie is you get to see really intelligent, educated, successful people who said, I believed in him. And then I realized he was a liar. And this is not good for our country. This is not aligning with our values. And let's move on. For our kids' sake and our grandkids' sake. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, so, you know, it's again, it's not about voting for Trump anymore. It's about voting against Trumpism, which is still and, here. It's actually worse <laughs> and it could get even worse. Yeah. And I, I would say instead of voting against Trumpism, it's like vote for people who care about the law Vote for people who care about human rights and the, and vote for people who like the Constitution yes. and want to honor the Constitution. And trust your conscience, trust your gut. And if there's some dissonance going on inside of you, my perspective is saying to people, look, you're intelligent. Listen to the other side. Make up your own mind. Don't just listen to the voices that say the other side is the enemy and is Satan and, and don't trust anything. You're intelligent. Make up your own mind. I still believe that most people are good <laughs> at yep, heart. Yeah, me too. You know? Uh, That's why I have hope. Yes. I mean, you were, you were a total jerk when you were a Mooney, right? I mean... <laughs> I, was a, I was a Nazi. That's what people said. And I'm Jewish. And I actually didn't realize how anti-Semitic the Moonies were until my deprogramming. And I met uh, Rabbi James Rudin, who went through the entire doctrine and outlined by a hundred anti-Semitic points <laughs> in the group. And I was like, I hadn't thought about it that yeah. way. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, anyway, I'm so thank lucky you. to have had you in in the in the film, and thank you so much for interviewing yeah, me and getting the word out. Yeah, thank you so very much.